Okay, let's open this thing up and see what she'll do. Sure. Go. again. When will people learn that that's no way to have a safe, good time? Okay, let's check that guy out. You can hail the operator of a boat you want aboard by holding your arms straight out, but it can be misunderstood. If the guy you're hailing misunderstands or doesn't stop, you can use a stop sign. Okay, let's give them the blue light. Since a flashing blue light can be seen in daylight as well as night, it's an even better attention getter. I could have used several other devices. A police whistle, a loud hailer is especially good, but even it fails sometimes. There's no mistaking this one. But it can embarrass the heck out of the guy by drawing the attention of the other boatmen so I turn it on only as a last resort. Anyway, in this case, the blue light did the job, so we prepared to pull alongside and board. Uh-oh, what did I do now? When I get within about 100 foot of the vessel, I check the number for proper display. Sir, place your engine in neutral gear. We'll come alongside your starboard side. Also check to see if enough fenders are out and enough personnel to handle the boarding. Good afternoon, sir. I'm Chief Thomas, U.S. Coast Guard, a federal boarding officer. I'm going to board your boat and examine it to see if it meets the minimum federal requirements. Okay, sir. I always remain courteous, but I never ask if I can go aboard. I don't want to give him the chance to decline and place me at a disadvantage right at the start of the examination. Sir, I'd like to see your certificate of numbers and some means of identification, such as a driver's license, something with your home address on it. All right, sir. Here's the registration card. Fine, thank you. Just the card, sir. Your name's Mr. Bassarge, is it? That's right. All right. Would you take it out, sir? Just your uh, driver's license would be sufficient. Then. All right. Mm -hmm. What's your middle name, Mr. Passage? Gunther. Gunther? All right. Fine. Thank you very much, Mr. Passage. When I get these papers, I give them to my other petty officers on board the boat. It records them on a Form 4100. It also tells me the boat's length, and if there is any doubt, I'll measure it. This is the official report of boarding. First, the boat's number is checked to see if it tallies with that noted by us on the approach and that it has been properly displayed. Sir, next I'd like to see three life-saving devices or personal flotation devices. All right, there's one right behind you here. All right. Good. Sir, what I'm doing is examine this personal flotation device. Underneath this cloth covering, is the flotation material itself. It's K-Pak or fibrous glass. It's in, a, it's in a heat sealed plastic bag. I'm looking for uh, pinholes, tears, rips, and punctures induced perhaps by the snag of a fish hook or even a lady's hairpin. And I take and squeeze each section. If, they ha if it has a puncture in it, you hear the air escaping and give off a hissing sound. So I squeeze and when it bubbles up just like that, we know it's good. We do each individual section. If any section has a hole in it, the entire device will be rejected or not acceptable. And we take the straps and give them a little tug. All right. Here's one more. All right, fine. All right, so this is a little different. This is made out of unicellular plastic foam. It's just foam rubber under the cloth covering. You cannot puncture this type. It's most important that every flotation device be marked with an official stamp of Coast Guard approval. 
This signifies that it has been tested and should be safe for use. Again, the straps. Fine. Got some more over here. Well, that's all right, sir. We can't accept these in these plastic containers. They're not readily accessible. You're going to have to open up one end of this plastic bag. Also, the fact that they're from the dealer and, and they're tied up and so forth, they, they're not really readily accessible. When you have a fire or an explosion or a collision, you need these things right away. Can't even untie the thing now. We don't. These things should be adjusted to the person's body. Ready to go. Sir, I'd like to look at your flame arrestor, the backfire flame arrestor on your engine. Yes, sir. And how many horsepower is your engine? 120. 120? Yes. All right, let's see if they're on tight. This is supposed to be a flame tight fit. We checked to see if there's any dirt, debris. It's pretty clean there. It's pretty good. Coast Guard approved? Fine. All right, so while we're back here, I'm going to check your ventilation on the engine compartment, the cow and ducking and so forth, make sure there's no bird nests, the leaf and so forth. Make sure the ducking's the proper size. That looks pretty good. You can see that one's fine there. All right, sir. Next, I'd like to hear your horn. Do you have a horn or a whistle on board? Yes, sir. All right. All right, sir, do you have a fire extinguisher on board? Yes, sir, it's back here. All right. Oh, no. Somewhere back here. Yeah, here it is. Sir, you shouldn't have this stowed in the same apartment as your engine. Chances are, if you had a fire, you'd probably have it right back here where you have this fuel and so forth. You should have this thing mounted out near the operator where everyone can see it. You need this thing in a hurry. 1B1, not accessible, not readily accessible, Vincent. All right, the gauge is up. I hit it here to make sure the needle is free. Check in the nozzle, see there's no foreign matter where a uh, wasp or mud diver is building stuff a little cocoon. Coast Guard approved. That's fine. Sir, you ought to leave this thing out uh, where you can get it pretty easily. It should be mounted out. I recommend it's mounted out. All right, sir. Not, not in the engine compartment. That's really an unsafe thing. How about if I mount this up there to you? By the wheel. Yes, sir. Accepted? That would be an ideal place. All right. Right sir. near the operator. All right, fine. Let's check the rest of your ventilation system here for your fuel tank compartment. All right. This is to remove the explosive vapors and fumes from the fuel and engine, engine compartment. That looks pretty good. All right, sir. So the reason why we stopped your boat was because you were coming in a posted area here by local authorities. This is a six-mile zone and you're up on a plane and traveling very fast you can get a cinder in your eye or a mosquito or something uh, grab the wheel and grab drive with one hand make a sharp turn perhaps strike a swimmer or another boat and this is very dangerous also i'd like to remind you that the have marinas and boats in this area and so forth you are responsible for any and all damage that is caused by your weight i'm going to give you a verbal warning on that this time if you continue to operate like that uh, i would stop you again and issue you a notice of violation for that if convicted of a criminal offense the penalty is could go as high as $2,000 in a year in prison or both. So I urge you to really slow your boat down. Uh, Vincent, are you finished with the 4100 for him? Okay, right. Sarge, here's your state registration card or certificate of numbers, your driver's license. And sir, currently your boat was in violation of federal law for the following reason. That is, upon the time of boarding, your fire extinguisher was not readily accessible. All right, sir. We are to correct the debt and sure be mounted there before we come back out again. All right, fine. Have you ever been examined by the Coast Guard before within the past three years? No, sir. I've never been stopped before. All right, fine. Let me have a warning sticker. Mr. Prasarge, 
So I'm going to issue a warning on this. Based on the premise that the discrepancies noted will be corrected before the next use of the boat, and your statement that this was your first citation for a violation of federal voting laws and regulations within the past three years, no penalty action will be instituted. This warning will be kept on file three years and will be considered in the event of a future violation. And this is your copy of the notice of violation. Also, right, here's sir. some Coast Guard literature here, sir. Okay, thank you. This will tell you all you need to have about the equipment on your boat and about the accessibility of the life-saving devices and the firefighting equipment. Okay, I'll keep my speed down. Thank now. you very much for your cooperation. Have a good day and a safe summer, thank Mr. Sergeant. Thank you, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. This one was a pretty routine boarding operation. The whole thing took less than 15 minutes. It's wise to detain a guy as short a time as possible, just long enough to get the job done. You're not there to harass him, just to look out for his safety. There are some times when a guy really lets loose at you with some foul language. It takes all your cool to keep from flipping right back at him. But it's part of the job. Being a boarding officer is no place for thin-skinned people. And don't feel you have to do it exactly the way I do. You can develop your own technique. Your basic guide is right here. Form 4100. It's all on the checkoff list. How you go about it depends a lot on your own style of doing things. Just remember, courtesy is the byword. Boarding officers examine vessels they don't inspect. And in this business, the guy who checks out A-OK -okay gets the color sheet and not the white one. OK, let's get underway. It's a good sunny day. Let's keep it a safe one. 